Hi, my name is Andre. I'm currently working as a research associate at the University of Manchester, the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. But originally I'm from Russia. I graduated in 2020 from Skoltek, Moscow. And that year, the last year of my PhD, was particularly challenging since I was completing my thesis and at the same time uh, searching and applying for postdoctoral positions abroad. It took me about six, seven months to find relevant positions, go through this application and review process and finally get this offer from Manchester. So now looking back on my postdoctoral experience, I see the things that I did okay, the things that I did wrong about this application process and also the things that I shouldn't be worrying so much about. So in this video, I want to share my experience with you and give you some recent updates and thoughts about postdoctoral job market. And hopefully this will help you to find a postdoc job you would enjoy. Okay, so let's start. And first, I want to briefly describe my own journey, the positions I applied for. And this can be visualized as this graph or a tree. Uh, you may read it from top to bottom and see that in total I applied for 13 positions. Uh, four applications were left with uh, no reply at all. Uh, five applications rejected and then I got four interviews and two position offers. I want to highlight that this is quite a successful statistics. I got four interviews after 13 applications. I heard much, much worse stories from my colleagues, for example, from uh, material science. Uh, they told me stories where people applied for 50 positions in order to get one offer, which seems really a lot to me. And what I want to, uh, to highlight in this video that we should work on the, maybe on the quality of our applications over the quantity and also improve our strategy of applications. I don't want to focus too much on this part where we get interviews and position offers. I, I think it's already quite easy and straightforward and I would recommend you to watch any related videos to job interviews because you, you will need to know how to present yourself and your skills. So I don't want to focus on this uh, successful part and instead let me tell you about this process of searching positions and applying for them. And yeah, also here I want to tell you that I was really discouraged and depressed with all of these applications without reply and the, uh, the rejected applications. And what do I mean by rejected, I got emails from professors or from HR teams of the universities saying something like, thank you for your interest in this university, in this position, but unfortunately this year we have an extreme number of applicants and sorry, your application was not shortlisted. So this is kind of uh, replies, the rejections that I got. And yeah, I, I was really disappointed with this because I thought maybe I'm so bad and my CV is so such not relevant that I cannot even go through this initial screening stage, okay? And yeah, now uh, uh, I have been working more than one year as a postdoc and I see that sometimes we simply don't understand what happens, what really happens about such positions, what happens be behind the curtains of certain labs, uh, teams of professors, and there are many positions on the market. We cannot say that they're like fake positions, but um, rather postdoc announcements that are really hard to get any feedback from, okay? And actually, I even have a story for you. I know one professor who last year announced a postdoctoral position, and I saw this announcement. I met this professor after a few weeks and asked him, how is your postdoctoral search uh, going on? And he told me, wow, I got so many applications. I got like more than 20 applications in this week. Uh, I said, that's cool. And uh, what about interviews? How many interviews did you have? And he told me none. He had no interviews with those people who approached him. Why? Because he was not that impressed of, of the applications. And let me tell you something. Professors, they don't live in vacuum. They know a lot of people in the field and they already have some plan in their mind who to attract for this position. For example, they are recently graduated students or maybe some other postdoctoral researchers and they have a plan who can be there. And just because they have to announce this position or maybe they just want to see what's happening in the field, they, they publish it, okay, they announce it. And then you approach such a position, you send your wonderful CV, but you are not impressing a lot that professor and he doesn't spend time answering all of these 20 applications that sorry you are not shortlisted i'm not really interested you just get no reply and you shouldn't be discouraged about this also uh, let me tell you that there is 
the opposite of, of this situation. There are some postdoctoral positions that are really easy to, to get. Uh, at least you can hear a feedback from them or maybe get an interview. And those are kind of positions where postdoctoral researchers are needed urgently. So again, from my experience, I saw positions, uh, I saw announcements saying that three, four or five postdocs are needed for this grant to work on this grant or on these industrial projects. And this, uh, this happens often a lot. So there are professors, some research teams that who, who want a grant, who want an industrial project, and they realize that they don't have enough manpower to work on it. And they really search for postdocs ur urgently. And if you, you're lucky and you apply for such a position, there are high chances that you will uh, hear, you will at least get some feedback or maybe an interview. So yeah, we discussed two extreme cases, uh, positions that really hard to get, uh, more or less uh, realistic applications and something in between. And we can do nothing about this, okay? We don't know, is this a real position or this kind of fake position? Uh, what we can do, we can uh, improve our application to maximize our chances to get, to get any feedback, okay? And uh, optimize our strategy of applying for these positions. And this is what I'm going to, uh, to discuss in this video. And yeah, uh, before uh, moving to the applications, let me just quickly highlight uh, where to find postdoctoral positions. So first of all, I'm sorry for this um, stock image of interconnected people, but this is what really happens with your networking. You know your professor, some people know your professor or your research, Team, your research lab and you might you, you need just to sp spend some time and energy thinking who might really know your work the work that you're doing the work that your professor is doing and maybe you can approach these people just uh, maybe not really formally just sending them emails asking uh, saying that you are working with this professor and um, ask are there any relevant postdoctoral positions so this is the first thing that you should be thinking about then also rather obvious it's academic job aggregators there are many of them uh, what is important that some of them are focused on specific area for example specific countries like jobs ac uk uh, aggregates postdoctoral positions only within the united kingdom but other websites like researchgate they have positions from all over the world so again all of these websites have really uh, a user-friendly interface many relevant positions so uh, give it a go Okay, now uh, we're coming to less obvious things. Uh, first, uh, in every research field, there are some specific uh, institutions and career digests uh, that focus only on this specific area, okay? And for example, I'm an electrical engineer and there is an institute for electrical engineers, IEEE. And within this institute, there is a branch called IEEE job site. And yeah, I, I monitored that website and there are many relevant positions published uh, both in academia and in industry. So again, think about such digests or career websites that are specific to your field. And finally, not uh, many people realize this, that you can monitor positions in a specific university that you like. For example, you might like University of Manchester or Imperial College London and such good universities, they usually have dedicated job sites uh, just for positions within the universities. And for example, Jobs Manchester ACUK or Imperial ACUK slash Jobs, uh, all the positions that are announced within uh, these universities are uh, also uh, reflected in the job portal. So if you have a dream of if you to work somewhere like in Oxford, or if you're just interested in some universities, you might start monitoring every week, every month, uh, positions that are announced on their dedicated job portals. Okay, so here are the main four uh, ways of finding postdoctoral positions. And now let's talk about uh, applications themselves. So there are two main ways you apply for postdoctoral position. First, you, you may approach a professor directly. For example, um, you may see the position and then the email of professor saying that, please send me your applications directly. So in this case, you write an email. Uh, of course, this should be a professional, uh, really concise email about your intention and about this position. Or the other way that there is no email, no personal information of any professor given, and you need to fill some special forms and apply uh, through university job system. But uh, regardless how you apply for uh, postdoctoral positions, there are, it, it all comes to two things. First is your CV. 
and second it's a, an email or a cover letter or sometimes it's it's any letter sometimes it's called a personal statement that you should uh, compose and send to the university or to a certain professor and once i first started uh, developing my uh, my own letters about two years ago i watched many videos on youtube and i found this particularly interesting video called advice from nobel laureate He's obviously a prominent researcher in the field. He runs a huge lab, I guess. Many people approach him every day about um, getting positions. And in that video, he said that most of the inquiries that I get for prospective postdoctorals show no thoughts whatsoever. And then he explained, uh, the letter comes and says, dear sir, dear professor, I studied your work and I'm really interested. And here is my CV and nothing else. And he said that he doesn't even reply to such emails okay so when i first saw this I, I thought wow that's indeed not 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 a great way to approach and a bit awkward not professional and of course i am much smarter and i should be making much better applications but the funny thing is that i i failed as well and i made the same mistake and my first uh, applications for postdoc positions were really awful and just for fun i want to share with you one of the first uh, letters I ever sent to a professor about postdoc position. As you may see here in the screen, uh, it's March 2020. And I say, dear professor, I saw a message about this position. I'm a student working here. Please find and attach my CV, my recent published paper. And you may find more details on my website. And I'll be happy to discuss this research and career opportunity with you. So to me now, it's really not a great email at all. And first of all, let me uh, highlight some, a few good things about this email, okay? Uh, so you may see here in green, it's good that I say that I work with Professor X and Professor Y, because it's really important to locate yourself in the field and mention as many important people as you know, okay? So, because, yeah, you, you're not saying that you're coming from nowhere, you say that you worked in this lab with these professors, I think it's quite obvious and by, by all means, uh, mention the people you, you know, the people you worked with. And the second thing, I briefly say that I worked in this theory and I used these techniques and models. So also it's important to say what are actually your hard skills. But I think that's all about good uh, parts of these emails. And now let's, let's highlight the bad parts. Uh, the introduction is awful. I say, I saw your message about this position and that's all, that's all that I say. No real ideas, no real intentions here. I just say, I saw the position, therefore I apply for it. It's kind of stupid, okay? And uh, I, I will show you next how to make a better introduction. Uh, and then I say, um, as, as the Nobel laureate mentioned, I say all of these things. I say, here's my CV, here's my paper, and here is my website, and come back to me. So you, you go and explore more information about me. And if you're interested, you contact me if you need me. So. It's not really paying much respect to the, to the professor and not really showing any research ideas, any additional experience or intentions. So really uh, um, not a great email. And by the way, I didn't even hear back from, from this professor, okay? That's how bad the email was. And now, uh, yeah, I was constantly working to improve my style, to improve my cover letters and this uh, email template. And let me show you the email that I sent a few months ago, uh, later, it's July 2020. I will not be reading this entire email. Please feel free to stop the video and uh, take some ideas, uh, maybe copy some phrases from here. But let's highlight a few good things about this. First, I improved the introduction, okay? Let, let me read the introduction. I say, dear professor, by this letter, I want to express my willingness to join your research group and contribute to the study on power system resilience. I feel that the recently announced postdoctoral position suits my field of expertise and my vision of research in power systems. So this is a great introduction. It's really concise and it's showing my intentions. I'm not just saying that I saw, your, uh, saw this announcement and here I am, okay? Then second paragraph, I explain my skills and who I am. Again, I, I mentioned the professors I'm working with. I mentioned uh, mathematical skills that I have, some models that I used. So second paragraph can be uh, dedicated to describe your current status and your skills. And then the most important part is the third paragraph where you explain that you, your understanding of this team and of this research and how you can contribute to it. So check this, I say here, as part of the team, I would like to develop 
this and that. And then I say, however, I do not limit myself to this field. I also have some experience here and there, and I will be grateful if you can find time to discuss the details of the project. So this email is much more professional, much more concise, and it, show, it really shows some ideas and intentions be, behind my application. And by the way, I didn't get this position, but at least I, I got a feedback from the professor, which is already a good sign, okay? So yeah, I highly recommend you to, to follow this three or four paragraph structure and feel free to copy some of these uh, expressions, how you can show really your skills and, how, and your possible contributions to the project and to the team. When you do not approach a professor directly, but you have to apply through the university job portal system, uh, it is often necessary to upload a separate PDF file called letter of statement or cover letter. I don't want to discuss this in much detail. Uh, please feel free to uh, stop the video and take again some ideas from, from my template. Uh, but uh, the main point is that this cover letter is an extended version of your e personal email to professor. So again, uh, you have a structure with several paragraphs uh, where you mention your current status and skills, who you are now, and then your intentions, and most importantly, a paragraph about your possible contributions to the research team. So we discussed where to uh, find postdoctoral positions and apply for them. Some mistakes with sending really bad uh, emails or cover letters. Uh, how, how to develop strategy here, how to improve your letters and applications. And w the, the key takeaway here is to always think what idea, what message am I sending to professors or to the university. So you, you want to stand out of all people who send these 20, 50 emails for this position. You want to say that you already have a plan, you already have an idea what you want to develop in the future, how you can contribute. So the final part is the interview. And as I said, I don't want to uh, talk too much about the interviews. I, I think if you are invited to an interview, it's already uh, a big success. And yeah, you need to, uh, to prepare for it, obviously, uh, what you're gonna say there. So just a few things here. Uh, first, let me say that we live in this time of technology. Probably you will have online meeting via Zoom or Teams. So please prepare some materials, even though they might I say you that uh, it will be a short 15-20 minutes interview, nothing is needed. Still, if you have some interesting papers or results, just keep these files open and maybe they will discuss your recent results and you can say, oh, do you want to see my figure? I, I will show it to you now. And yeah, it will be just an additional point for you for this interview. And the last thing that I want to mention, I heard this opinion about postdoc interviews uh, many times and I agree with it that uh, the outcome of a postdoctoral job interview um, is pretty much interpersonal, which means that uh, rather you and your professor or manager understand in the first 10 minutes that you like each other, you can trust each other and you would definitely enjoy working uh, with each other for the next couple of years or not. And this is the most important thing for, for your professor, for manager, and for you as well. And uh, if, if you really click with your uh, future professor, then you have high chances of getting uh, feedback or even an offer from them rather soon. So let me tell you my experience. I had a really nice, uh, friendly uh, interview with two professors from Manchester. It was a not that long interview, like 30 minutes. And then I heard from them back in uh, th about three days and they said that they are re uh, ready to make me an offer. So you see, we really clicked, we really liked each other, like uh, our topics, our experience, and they made me an offer quickly. And I had some other interviews that were so-so and then there was nothing for, for weeks, so not, not immediate offer. So I, I, hope, I hope you find uh, research team professors that you would like and get your offer rather quickly. Okay, thank you for watching this video. I hope that uh, this experience and advice that I shared will be helpful for you and uh, you will eventually find a postdoc job you would enjoy. So yeah, good luck with your postdoctoral applications and see you. Bye.